Welcome to Reaching for the Moon, hosted by me, Ed Grace. Well, it's been another exciting week in space exploration here in the U.S. For those of you that don't know me, I worked on the Apollo program for 10 years while I was at MIT Draper Laboratory in Cambridge, Massachusetts. MIT had a contract with NASA to design and develop the inertial navigation system which was used on both the Apollo Command and Lunar Modules. I was a member of the Apollo 13 Mission Operations Team at Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas that was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom for getting the Apollo 13 astronauts safely back to Earth after an oxygen tank exploded in their service module on the way to the moon severely crippling the spacecraft approximately 200,000 miles from Earth. In earlier videos in this series, I discussed the strategic and philosophical differences between the Artemis and Apollo programs, as well as the differences in the SLS and Saturn V launch rockets used by each program. Today I will discuss the differences between the Artemis Orion spacecraft and the Apollo command module. Deep space exploration, like what is planned for Artemis, presents greater challenges for the spacecraft than the environment encountered by Apollo on its trips to the moon or by the shuttle on its low orbit ventures to the International Space Station. Redundancy and automated computer intelligence will keep critical items up and running to bring the crew home safely even when the Orion spacecraft is far from home. But let's suppose there's a problem in an Artemis mission. How do we keep the crew alive and safe long enough to get them home? Hey, it may take four to five days. The first item needed is a spacesuit that the crew could live in for up to six days which means thinking of every biological accommodation. The white suit that you see is what they would use for extravehicular activity. The orange suit is much more flexible and designed such that the astronauts can exist in it for up to a week. Living in a spacesuit for so long would probably be the most uncomfortable thing they've ever experienced, but it would keep the astronauts alive until they got home. There's been lots of advancements in spacesuit design since Apollo, and it will need to continue as our space missions become longer. Now let's compare the Orion spacecraft and the Apollo command module. A similar design as was used in Apollo is being used for Orion. That is, it has a heat shield, it deploys parachutes, and it lands in water. The Orion is designed to hold four astronauts, whereas the Apollo command module was designed to hold three. The Orion is a little larger than the Apollo command module. It's about three feet wider. And with an extra astronaut on board, you will need another seat, more oxygen, more water, more food, and clothes. That ends up being over a thousand pounds extra per person that you put on a spacecraft, plus the added physical space they need to exist in the spacecraft. During the Apollo era, we didn't have any communication satellites in orbit. Ground stations were needed to support all of NASA's Apollo manned flights. Today, there is a U.S. tracking and data relay satellite system network, which is a, a network of American communication satellites used by NASA for space communications. The network greatly will increase the time that Orion is in communication with the ground and improves the amount of data that can be transferred between the Orion spacecraft and mission control. One of the big constraints on Apollo was you had to land on the face of the moon, facing Earth, and you had to land no more than about 20 degrees north or south of the moon's equator. With those requirements, you'd have the ability to communicate with the Earth direct line of sight during the landing, the approach to landing, and all the time that you're on the surface of the moon. The command module's orbit would circle the moon, 
meaning there was no communications with mission control while the command module was behind the moon. Because of these communications restraints, about 80% of the moon was not available for landing sites during Apollo. Artemis is planning on using a different orbit around the moon called the near rectilinear halo orbit, which we're going to discuss in the next video. However, it's a seven day orbit that will keep orienting communications with mission control 100% of the time. The window shades on the Orion have been really modified. Not only do they keep the sunlight out when the cabin and crew is in a sleep condition, but they also have a shroud that's going to allow the crew to take pictures of deep space without having any effect from the cabin lights. Sleeping bags have been added and streamlined to reduce the mass that Orion will need to carry up during launch and can be hung in several different places throughout the cabin to maximize space for the crew, as you can see in this image up on the screen right now. They also have armholes so the crew can use their tablets before they go to sleep. Apollo did not have any sleeping bags. These are small modifications, but will make for a more comfortable flight for the astronauts. One of the major differences that Orion also uses solar arrays for power rather than fuel cells, as was the case of Apollo. Thus, Orion basically gets free power from the sun for as long as the mission may be. Apollo had a 14-day mission limit because of the use of fuel cells, but Orion technically can fly forever. Okay, that summarizes the major differences between the Orion spacecraft and the Apollo command module. In the next video in this Artemis series, we're going to discuss the Artemis Gateway and the advantages of having a space station continuously orbiting around the moon. If you like today's video, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time that Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. Thank you for watching. In the meantime, remember always, failure is not an option. Bye.